lot to catch you up on. We got a YCIV here that was tripping on a low suction pressure. Spent the last several days trying to figure out as to why. It was apparent pretty quickly that we had an issue with charge, so we ended up pulling the charge out just to check, see what it was. Out of 185 pounds, we only got 65 pounds out of it, which is horrendous. Now, we just recently did some repairs to this right at about a month ago. Now on those repairs, we had to replace the drain feed valve. We had a, an economizer rebuild to do. We had several things. Even after that, we still came back and we had to do the PMs, which was only a couple of weeks ago. During that time, they were perfectly fine. There wasn't anything wrong with them. They, they checked out just as they should. There was no issues, no concern. There was nothing to be worried about. But here we are, customer called, system was down, charge is way short. This doesn't happen very often, but we've spent two, no, three days trying to search this whole machine. We've tore everything apart. We've gone through the entire system we can't find anything anywhere. And to make matters worse, we've held pressure on the system with nitrogen for two days now at 100 PSI with no issue. Our next steps, we're gonna have to pull a vacuum on this circuit, recharge it, get enough refrigerant in there to let it stay online. Then after we let it run for a bit, let that heat build up in the high side, let's get some head pressure in there. Then we'll be able to shut the circuit down with the whole high side of the system hot and re-leak search and I'm quite confident that's when we're going to see our leak. You see there are a couple of oil spots in there that we, we've tried to search and we've looked at so there is some kind of evidence that something was happening but it's not enough evidence to conclusion or to make a conclusion that we've got a leak there and the detectors, the bubbles, nothing is telling us anything else. Okay a lot has happened which was expected. We knew this job was going to turn into a lot so this turned into two different leaks uh, so we went through the process, we pulled the vacuum, we actually got the vacuum to pull down, uh, it was to 600, it was in the 600, I think it was like 680, then it went to, uh, it went up to 800 and something within about a couple of hours. We, we did a pretty good uh, standing test just to see how would it do before we did anything. We stayed below 1,000. Granted, we didn't get down to 500. Once we got it charged up, we put 120 pounds back in it. We didn't charge the whole weight because we didn't want to, first of all, in case we lost it. Second of all, uh, undercharging it was going to put more stress and more heat on the whole system, which was going to help us identify the problem faster. In that process, we ended up finding, after, after an hour of runtime actually, the transducer fitting, adapter fitting goes into the discharge service valve on top. That ended up starting to leak. Like I said, it took about an hour to first show up at all. And then it took another hour or two before it really got excessive. So when it first came up, it was fairly small and was just little bubbles. After a couple hours of runtime total, it got bad enough to where the bubbles wouldn't even form on it. As soon as it hit, it blow them straight off. But he was standing off to this side of the unit and then all of a sudden he saw the uh, refrigerant clouds start coming out of the side, which obviously something's going on there. So he comes over and that's when he looks down inside and he sees the feed valve is spewing out pretty dramatically. So what he ended up determining, now this was three hours in, mind you. It took three hours, eventually enough heat and uh, just, the, just the right conditions formed in the system to where we had a severe leak on the discharge, which we didn't cause, but we also had a leak open up uh, and it was actually at the threads where the head and the valve body meet that opened up at the feed valve itself. Uh, we did just replace that valve about a month ago, so that means that you ultimately we have to take responsibility on that. You know, we offer a 90-day uh, workmanship. That valve failed, or that, that seam, that was a seam we serviced. Whether we made a mistake or not, it was within that 90-day period. We now hold some responsibility on this total jobs failure. Ultimately, we, we recovered the system back down immediately. We pulled that valve back out, we checked it, nothing was deformed, no major trash, nothing of concern. So from that stage we went ahead, cleaned it up, put some fresh nylog on it, threaded it back in, and obviously we, we used some 554 on these threads up here. So that's been kind of our new process and procedure is we're using nylog on seams like this, especially being a mechanical seal. We don't need thread sealer uh, to seal that, it should be a tight enough on the torque to where that's going to seal itself mechanically. But on like these threads up here, 
we need an actual sealer in place to make sure that they, they do seal and hold as we expect them to. Uh, I have, we, we've ran into enough issues when we're dealing with an MPT, a national pipe thread like we have, Nylog is, is too fluid for a high pressure, high temperature state like this up here. It ends up pushing out, we end up allowing a leak to form. So we've switched over to 554 by Loctite. We've had far better results with that. After we got the leak sealed, we came back, we uh, redid a pressure test. We held pressure over the weekends at 207 PSI, didn't lose anything at all. We came back in yesterday, got the, uh, the vacuum going. We pulled yesterday and overnight. We came in this morning, we were at 380 microns. We did a uh, one hour standing. Now that's, that's kind of a short time, but we're on a short time frame. I'd much prefer to do a four hour, but in this case, we did one. Anyway, did a one hour standing in one hour, we rose to 480. We went ahead, we've charged all that back in the system, and we just finished a four hour stress test on the circuit. So we got it booted up. We pushed it to its maximum. We were allowing it to cycle. We were putting heavy load. We did a full pull down with it. And we had had the full charge, but we were running at almost 100% the whole time. And because of how much load we were putting on it, we were able to consistently maintain about 40 degrees of discharge superheat, which just goes to stretch. It goes to show the stress we were able to put on the compressor and just the whole system in general. Through all of that, here at the very end, We've done a shutdown, we've re-leak checked not only what had failed, but we went through the whole system again just to see if anything else was gonna show itself before we completely walked away. At this stage, we are uh, back to normal operations. So the way that that, not only the feed valve, but also this discharge valve was leaking, for us to lose 120 pounds rapidly is absolutely possible and expected. It doesn't surprise me. I feel very confident We've got the correct solution here. We've got everything sealed. Now, we had everything sealed uh, going on, I guess, almost two months ago now since we did the initial repairs before the PMs even got started. So hopefully the system holds and it does what it needs to. If we had only started to leak at this discharge threads up here, uh, I would have felt differently because that's not a joint we've affected or done anything to cause a leak at. So I, I wouldn't hold that at the same level but that feed valve specifically, that was a major leak alongside that discharge. That's where we hold responsibility as technicians and we've got to own that with the customer, make it right, move on. It's 120 pounds. We followed all the proper procedures. We went through all the right steps and ultimately a failure happened. Own it, deal with it, move on. Your customer appreciated for it. These are hard leaks. These are hard jobs to run across. They would not show themselves without the stress on the system. Most of the time, leaks aren't like this, but in this situation, I hope this gives you some perspective and helps you see just what it can look like, what it's gonna run into sometimes, and just, it's gonna get nasty, it's gonna get ugly. You've just gotta get in there, put the work in, appreciate it, MTT, spend time with your family, your spouse, your kids, be safe through this summer. I'll catch you around.